Howdy. 99 Ranger 3.0. Got a quick tip for you here on these heater hose adapters. You may be doing radiator hoses on one of these and find that this guy is all rusted up jagged. There's a risk of damaging the new radiator hose when you hook up to that. Um, this one, on I, I saved this from a previous one that I did, just as an example of how bad it can get. This one is not as bad on here. Um, and that's the uh, this right here is what we're looking at. Not as bad on here, but still is jagged. There's a nick in it that I'm worried about damaging the... Uh, the new small pipe out of the new radiator hose. That's where that hooks up to. So this can seem a little intimidating to get out of here once you get into it, but I promise you it's not. It's well worth replacing it if you're doing these radiator hoses and there's significant damage to it. Uh, I don't have a tripod with me, so I'm not going to do a full teardown video. I'll just run over it with you real quick here. So you are going to need to loosen the compressor, but you do not need to discharge the system. All you need to do is take out, there's three bolts here, here, and down there. That's going to give you enough wiggle room on the compressor pipe here, since it's solid from here back. That's going to give you enough room to be able to wiggle that out of the way and get that out. Now, the only other thing we're going to run into is the good end of it especially on a new one because if that's rusted down you might be able to loosen it without taking out anything else but uh the new one is longer it's not going to go on unless you loosen this whole assembly so there's a of course an idler pulley right here you're going to take that off tensioner down there um, if it's factory it's probably going to take a t50 bit and if you have um, if you have bits like these, you might have trouble getting in there around the. If I can even get my hands on it, around the fan. Um, in this case, they've got a little skinny radiator here. I can get in there with an extension. But just real quick, one thing you can do is whatever size it is. I don't I don't remember, but. Just slap the box end of a wrench around one of these things. And oftentimes that'll be enough to break it loose. And you can you can do it like that. But anyway. Um, loosen the connector. It's a 19 millimeter. There's, there's a couple ways to get at that. Or not the connector, but the uh, temperature sensor sender whichever one it is i believe that's the one for the gauge um but then for for getting this whole mount to be able to and need it to be able to slide over just a little bit you don't you don't have to remove the whole thing but you just need it to be able to shift over a little bit and how you accomplish that is like i said take off this pulley that tensioner and there are going to be three bolts on the front, and one of them is going to be right here. Another one, let me see if I can get a light on it for you, because it is a bit of a pain to see stuff in the dark. Okay, you see that? So there's one down in there, in that little nook there. It'll be a little hard to get at. But uh, you can find it, and there will be one more right there. So, looking at it from the front, I'll try to. We've got the right there, and then you see that little nook. Oh, so I can get to it right there it'll be that way into it, facing into the engine. And then you see that little nook right there is gonna be, gonna be the third one. And then there are two nuts 
down on this side, and that is almost even harder to see, but I don't know if you can see right down. Where am I looking? I'm looking with my eyes and the camera at the same time, and that's not working so hot. Okay, you see that nut right there? That's one of them. That's the lower one. And then... Uh, let's see. Bear with me here. Okay, you see that stud right there? Right in the center of the frame. That is... Get the spotlight up in there. That's the other one. I've already taken off the nut. I've taken off all these bolts and, and loosened the nuts enough. Um, that bottom nut and maybe even the top one don't have to be taken all the way off. Just enough, li literally, you're just wiggling this thing a little bit. Then just a, I'm sure there's a size, but this thing's bulky enough. You can just use an adjustable wrench. Start loosening that up. By the way, important information. This is Dorman, part number 47993. A lot of auto parts stores have them on hand, but in general, I uh, I just like to be able to order it in advance. I'll get it off Rock Auto for a better deal. So, But that's the part number. It can usually be, be found locally if you're in a pinch and you need it right away. Definitely wouldn't recommend... Yeah, you can see it starting to come around here. Definitely wouldn't recommend um, putting on brand new radiator hoses if that thing is sufficiently damaged and risking uh, risking damage to your brand new hoses and have to have to either repair them or cut them down, extend them, or even get new ones. So. Yeah, I apologize, I'm not even looking at my camera right now. But yeah, this will be easier with two hands, so I'll come back in just a moment. All right, here is the part off of this truck, and let's see if you can see. Focus, focus, focus. With There we go. That's the part that worries me right there. That's a little bit right here, too but don't want anything that's going to cut up that new hose from the inside. So our new one about ready to go on. Um, if you get the dormant, it will have thread sealant already on it. If there's, I'm sure there's other brands out there, but just make sure you got some kind of sealant on it. And same thing for the temperature sensor. If you're reusing the sensor, clean this up with a wire brush, put some thread sealant on it. Uh, let me grab my sealant. Actually, I'll show you. And that's what I use, Permatex number 80632. Just a little thin coating. Clean it up with a wire brush and get a coating on there. And time to go back together with it. All right, got that back together there. And you'll have to get a little bar or something and just keep wiggling this back as you bring that around because every time it's gonna, the pipe at the bottom is gonna wanna, wanna hit this. So you have to move it out of the way as you go. But it's a lot better than taking the whole thing off. Now, this is from straight up. You wanna leave it at a little bit of an angle. That way that pipe doesn't run directly into the water pump. You wanna give that lower hose there a little bit of breathing room as it comes into there. And that is pretty much it. The rest of installation is reverse removal. Just get everything else back together. Fish those bolts back through the front there. Put your air cleaner and all that back on. Um, I think that is it. So, yeah, if you have any other questions about this job, just leave me a comment if I forgot anything. Y'all have a good one.